O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ, Christ, Lamb of our our salvation. salvation. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the first word from the cross, Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is from the prophet Isaiah, the 52nd and 53rd chapters. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second word from the cross, Luke 23, 43. Amen, I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise.
The epistle is from Hebrews, the fourth and fifth chapters. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The third word from the cross, John 19, 26 and 27. 
Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. The Passion of our Lord, according to St. John. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, Wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, 
we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. The fourth word from the cross, Matthew 27, 46, and Mark 15, 34. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me?
So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, And at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The fifth word from the cross, John 19, 28. I thirst. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. 
for I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O oh, my people, Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the bread of life, the bread of God, the bread from heaven. I am the light of the world. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the true vine. So far in this Lenten season and Holy Week, six of the I am's of Jesus, six sayings in which he teaches his divine nature that he is God and Lord. Some were met with faith, others with scoffing and incredulity. Moses gave the manna. What sign do you do? You're not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. His answer to that? You have seen the Father, and you know him and you will see and know the Holy Spirit. In Christ the I Am, the fullness of the three-in-one I Am, is present and reveals himself to us and to all men. Six I Ams from the lips of Jesus. It is the sixth day of the week. And the one who has said, I am, will now speak seven words from his cross. And there is a seventh I am to hear from the lips of Jesus. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alpha is the first letter, the beginning of the Greek alphabet, and Omega the last letter, the end of the Greek alphabet. For us, it would be the equivalent of saying, I am the A and the Z. Or for our Canadian brothers and sisters, I am the A and the Z. Some modern paraphrases, such as the Living Bible, have used that. But it doesn't sound quite as poetic and as elegant as the Alpha and the Omega. This particular I am is spoken in the last chapter of, in all of sacred scripture, the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation. The first of the three pairs is first spoken by the Lord in the first chapter of Revelation. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The one speaking this I am and every one of these I am's is the Lord God, the Almighty. What does this mean for us on Good Friday? Good Friday, the day when darkness fell at midday over the whole earth. Good Friday, when the Son of God cried out to his heavenly Father in the middle of all his words from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Forsaken, left all alone, suffering, body racked with searing pain, soul full of sorrow, and darkness all around. Who will come near or intervene to save or to give a little relief? to show some human kindness. Oh, there is the hyssop branch with the sponge. Is that much? That's right at the end. Really, no one. Oh, there are those nearby who also mourn, whose hearts are sorrowful, whose eyes well up with tears of grief. There is one uh, on one of the other crosses who does recognize the innocence of the one crucified next to him 
and he asks for mercy and pity for himself from Jesus. While at least he expresses faith and hope in Jesus, this thief, this rebel, has nothing else to give. Has a darkness enshrouded the whole earth on this Good Friday too? Perhaps you're going through it yourself or feeling alone, forsaken. Where is some human contact, some small kindness for me? We look for glimmers of hope. Treatments for the current pandemic? Yes, they show considerable promise. Vaccines, a little further in the future. A return to work? Getting the economy going again? It's starting already in some places. By the way, there's nothing wrong and very much right and good in thinking about the economy. God's word is filled with counsel about such matters. In our English Bibles and church usage, we usually speak of stewardship. The Greek word for steward, the household manager, is oikonomos. And for the work he does, oikonomia, economy. Our Lord God expects us, his stewards, to be working to engage in the work and interactions of the household, the community, the nation, the church. That is what God means by the economy. In any case, we see, we sure hope we're seeing, a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, but what if it's a train coming from the other direction? Some have had that kind of chicken little warning. If that's the case, then get moving. Just stop squashing all hope. In the true and full and deep darkness that came over all the earth on that first Good Friday, the light of hope still shone. He hangs upon the cross, which to our sin-blinded eyes and sin-darkened minds looks like weakness, loss, complete and utter shame. Yet this is his glory, his ascension and return to the Father. He makes full satisfaction for all sin before the Father, and his Father accepts the Son's payment for the debt we owed him. The first Adam, the father of us all, was made from the dust of the earth. He rebelled against the Lord God. He and all his children must die and return to the dust from which they came. For each one of us, these words are complete truth. Remember, O man, that thou art dust, and to dust shalt thou return. Before being cast out of the garden, the man and the woman were clothed with garments of animal skins, a sign of the sacrifice to come. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven. He obeyed the Lord God as a son obeys his father. He has done nothing deserving of death. Indeed, he is the only innocent one in the whole human race. Yet he dies and is laid in the dust of death into the earth. He is clothed with strips of linen. Through our baptism, God clothes us, as it were, with the skin of the sacrifice for sin, the Lamb of God. We are covered with his perfect righteousness. He is clothed with our death, and we are clothed with his life. 
Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed, says the Apostle Paul. Christ is our Passover, the one whose death and blood guard us from eternal death. The Hebrew word for Passover is Pesach, which in the Greek became Pascha. Christ, our Pascha, has been sacrificed. Pascha is also the name of the Greek feast of the resurrection of our Lord, what we call Easter. I have mentioned this before, writing about it in one of my pastor's ponderings a while back. It's a connection that just so happens in the Greek, which is the original language of the inspired New Testament, where John first begins writing that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. And the language of the I am from Revelation 22. The word Pascha, Passover, ends with the letter Alpha, the first Greek letter. Now, what happens when we change that to the last Greek letter, Omega? It becomes Pasco, which means I suffer. The I am who is the Alpha and the Omega, Christ Jesus, is our Pascha, our Passover, who says, Pasco, I suffer gladly, willingly for you in your place. I take your loss and give you my gain. I take your debt and give you my full credit. I take your sin and give you my righteousness. I take your punishment and give you my innocence. I take your death and give you my life. I take your darkness and give you my light. Even in the darkness over all the earth, he is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. He is the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush, I am that I am. Earthly lights can burn only because something is consumed. Wood, oil, wax, a wick, electricity, the filament in an incandescent light bulb. Even the created heavenly lights are eventually consumed as the stars burn through their fuel. The light of God alone burns eternally. Moses looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. Why was there fire, and yet the bush was not burned up? It was the angel of the Lord, the Lord himself, in the fire and in the light. He is the eternal fire and the eternal light, and he cannot be consumed. He who appeared in the bush, not consumed, also appeared on the tree of the cross and is not consumed. Though he truly dies, death does not, indeed cannot, consume him. For behold, he also says at the end of Scripture, I am the root and the shoot of David, the bright morning star. He is the new and true tree of life, and he is the morning light newly risen. Here on the sixth day, the day of the first creation of man, is the new creation begun in the new man, the last Adam, the firstborn from the dead who is the end of death and the beginning of life eternal for you. He is your light and bright hope in the darkness, no mere glimmer, and he shall never fade away. In the name of Jesus.
reminder, please remember to continue with your offerings and tithes to the Lord that the work of his kingdom here and beyond may continue and be supported. The sixth word from the cross, John 1930. It is finished. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, Heavenly Father, we give you most hearty thanks that you have removed from us the grievous burden of our sins and placed it upon your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Govern us by your Holy Spirit that we may comfort ourselves with his suffering and death in the face of all temptations, diligently guard against sin and an evil conscience, and finally obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The seventh word from the cross, Luke 23, 46. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. 